Is there a delay? No, it's live. <laughs> we're live now. And guess what? We're all four here, guys. Yay. <laughs> Yay. That's so awesome. Hello. Hello. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> yes. No, it, it feels right. We're all back, all four of us. Yes. yes. Some of us might be glitchy. I don't know, but we'll hopefully yeah. won't, <laughs> won't continue. Yes. We'll, we'll love you through it. Thank you. Yeah. I need all the love I can get. Ooh, I'm getting notifications of all kind of people are going live on digging Everybody. in the bird. Oh, really? Cool. Got a yep. Got them all. So, hope. Oh, sorry. Love our Monday nights. We're yes, kind of, I do. After today, I really need this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just been one of those days. I think the rain just kind of makes you just go. Yeah. Hey, well, you can't yeah. get out and work when. When working is what you thrive on, it's yeah. hard on the days that you can't. Yes, yeah. it is. Very much so. You are right. I agree 100% because you're cooped up and you're like, I really need to be doing this. I really need to be doing that. I can't go outside. We, out there. <laughs> yeah. we didn't get much rain. I just stuck in the office, but I'll go up to the window every once in a while, like look out going, oh, it's <laughs> old and windy. A little bit of rain, not much. I'm in jail. I'm in jail. <laughs> Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Well, Miss Christine, as usual, do you want to, would you like to open us up in prayer? I would love to. Okay. Right. Love to, love to. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, dear Lord, we just thank you for this time we have together. We thank you for this hour. We know it flies by really fast, but we just, we just thank you for it. We're grateful for this time. And dear Lord, I just thank you um, for this chapter we're going to be reviewing in the book of Ruth. I just pray that you, um, help us see what you want us to see through this chapter. And I thank you for everyone in the chat. And I thank you for my sisters on online with me and all these things we pray through Christ Jesus name. We pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I want to say something real quick. What was okay. the challenge last week, Tara? Remind everybody your challenge that you put out to everybody. The challenge was to, Oh gosh. I know. Mean, mm -hmm. And I like did it for the first five days and I already forgot. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the right? but trying to find being thankful, gratitude. Yeah. And, stuff. and so I kept doing that. And I hear what Tara was saying and it really helped because a few days, I mean, just immediately I was like, Oh, I need this. Oh, find the good wow. and find the yeah. good in, in absolutely. Every and today, I couldn't, I, I couldn't remember if we gave it a fancy name or not. No, I can't remember I'm either. I'm so sorry. I just want to know. I took the challenge and I it was very helpful for me because I kept thinking about that. Um, I didn't today because I was like, wait a minute, I know this challenge. I couldn't remember the specifics of it. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm thankful. Right. Whatever it is, I'm thankful. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get through this. God's going to see me through this. Mm -hmm. yep. yes. thanks for every day. Yes. Yes. So thank you for putting that out there. Yeah. Uh, I don't awesome know if anybody else like has any testimonies to that, put it yeah. in the comment section. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that that was, was pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I liked it. Of mm -hmm. course, I like challenges too. So <laughs> I, know. I know, right? Um, <laughs> Well, as we always say, uh, thank you to everybody for coming in. Uh, yes. We all know we all know that we're streaming. We're all for streaming, uh, co-streaming from all of our channels because we want to reach the most amount of people that we can with our digging in the word. So yeah. we're. Oh, I guess I'm the everybody. only one that didn't put my. I didn't put my channel in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And we're grateful for everybody for coming yes. in. So we want to say wow. hello, big hello to everybody. And the wind really uh, picked up here. Sorry. It's oh, loud. No. It's been like 20 something and then gusts above that all day. And we're going to get that till all through tomorrow. It just shook the house. It just kind of scared me. Sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a little frightening. I, I get you, Nana. Yeah. I get it. Cause yeah. we got it too. But um, so make sure that you, this is your time in church where yes. the music is stopped and you get up and you greet your neighbor. So hello, hello. 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 <laughs> we're getting better at that. We are getting better. Say hello to your neighbor. Yes, and we're up there. You know what? Give them a virtual hug if you want. Do the hug emoji. Yes. You know, hug my neighbor. Yeah, yeah um, I'm a hugger. Me too. Yeah. I'll hug you. 
Oh, we've got great I hugs. do air hugs. Air yes. hugs. <laughs> yeah. But also, yep. we just want to remind everybody that, and, and actually, I'll, I will elaborate a little bit more on this. So, of course, every week, I make sure to let everyone know that, you know, we're not pastors, we're not ministers. Um, and I was reminded through another email from um, one of our viewers that, in essence, we are. Um, because we're not scholastic. We're not, you know, we didn't go to college for it. That doesn't mean that we're not spreading God's word. And that doesn't mean that we're not providing inspiration for everyone. I appreciate that message, but still here we are with our little disclaimer that, you know, we're four women digging in the word, trying to learn, trying to do our best to uh, apply God's word in our everyday lives. And mm -hmm. so we welcome you and uh, hopefully we get it right. There's five yes. of that don't always get it right, but that's why we're here. And we yeah, appreciate yeah. everybody in the comments for helping us along Absolutely. and, us and uh, giving us uh, the tips and uh, corrections yeah. and whatever it may be. Uh, yeah. And for anyone that's, for. anyone that's new here, we're in Ruth. We're starting chapter three this week. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And I was backstage last week. I just couldn't be present on screen. <laughs> and Nana was cuddled in her bed. I was in bed. Us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Yes. Yeah. So was one bad. of the things that um, Tara and uh, I think Christine both enjoyed last week about me being backstage <laughs> is because I was backstage, I was able to highlight a lot of the comments I was yeah. going through and reading. So I am going to try to make sure that I try to highlight as much as I can while we're talking through this. Uh, again, don't charge it to my heart if I don't get yours. I promise it is not intentional. Right. It really is not. But um, I will try to highlight as we go through when people make a point um, about something that we've said. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say one thing uh, that's been on my heart uh, a little bit this week is I want to talk about when we have the scripture or the, the slides up, Tara's taking that from uh, whether it be the King James Version or the New Living Transit, or is it New Living Transit? Uh, I don't know. New living transition or yeah. something like yeah. that. So um, I just want everybody to know that when I do my Bible studies at home, you know, I have several different volumes. <laughs> Bibles, bodies, um, but I'm going to study from the King James. Okay. That's what I grew up on. That is, um, I think to me, the truest is yeah. the inspired um, word of God. That's what I have here, this King James. Right. So I just want to share that that way. We all know where we're at with this. Um, I know there's very many other um, translations out there, but that is where we stay focused on yeah. through this Bible studies. So thank you. I just wanted um, to share that. I could probably, I mean, I'll, I'll look. I mean, that's, I think I can change the, the version. Oh, uh, no, you're fine. I just like, when we start talking about it, if I start talking about something, yes. it's always going to be from my perspective, from what I feel like, uh, you know, is um, the inspired word of God, you know, not from a different translation. Yeah. So and that's you know, what you're reading. Read from. Too. Yeah. I just want everybody to know where I'm coming from, that what you have on the slides are perfect, Tara. I just wanted yeah. everybody to understand where I'm coming from when I yeah. speak to Yes. Yeah. And no, James, um, it wasn't meant as a dig. Uh, they were actually uh, complimenting us because each week we say that we're not preachers, we're not ministers, yeah. we're, you know, and they're like, no, you guys are doing the Lord's work. And in their eyes, they yeah. felt that did make us kind of in, in that ministry. Uh, yeah. Realm. And so, yeah, no, it was not, it was not a, a dig at all. I, I, I guess I didn't articulate my words. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just had popped into yeah. my head. So, yeah, it was not meant in a bad way. It was meant in a complimentary yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. And we love getting those emails and sharing and your perspectives on things. So please keep them oh, coming. Yes. Please keep it going in the chat. Um, we love y'all. And we're all, like we've said all along, we're around a big kitchen table. Um, just my husband, there's a huge rainbow that is, is, is like, right across Aww. the ridge it's it's 
encompassing our property Aww. on the ridge. So he had to come tell me. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's <laughs> promise right there. I love it. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. Okay. So you ladies, uh, Nana and I want to thank both of you for towing the line last yes. week. <laughs> you did a I fantastic. appreciate you guys so much. Oh, yeah. That's what sisters yeah. do. Yeah. We, we yeah. fill the gaps when we yeah. need to for each other. So. And there's going to be awesome on the fly. Thank you. I mean, there's going to be times when we're all, when we all just are going to have to pull together. We we do it every yeah. opportunity as sisters. So yeah, um, if we do what we got to do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So see, I find myself now looking at chat and trying to see what what I need to. Pop. I know. <laughs> So I'm not sure how well this is going to work, guys, because I want to be in it. I really do. I know. And I want you to be in it, too. So we'll just we'll find a happy medium. We'll we'll yeah. You know, we're, we we're growing. We're, I think we're, we're making improvements every time we go along through. Which one are. Is. We are. So we want to go ahead and move in. Oh, and make sure everybody and stay tuned because Tara has a special yes. email to share. Yes. Mm -hmm. um from someone that is uh very you're gonna want to stay around for it what is that i'm not spilling beans I'm not yeah, spilling I think, beans. i think it's just a way to um to appreciate <laughs> and, and love our our wonderful chat uh chat section during this time and um you know i receive several emails each week uh and please keep them coming we love them mm -hmm. uh, yes. i love them and it's just kind of, I wanted to start kind of a little segment after the chapters called Words from the Sisters and Brothers. So if you're a guy and you send one, it's going to be from our brother. And <laughs> just some little snippets that, that kind of inspire us or that we feel is relevant to what it is we're studying. And, and it keeps yeah. you guys in, um, involved because we do hear you. We do see you mm -hmm. and we Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yes. So that'll be coming up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dig back. It's not too noisy room. here, is it? Because no. that, that wind is terrible. I, can, yeah, I don't hear anything. No, okay. Yeah, good. I don't hear anything either, Nana. I'm okay. sorry. I know it. it's, it's loud. <laughs> yeah, it's unnerving. So I, I understand. And if I see you go, I'll know. I don't know what's going on. Here's the sun shining, but all of a sudden the wind just picked up like it's storming. I don't know. Yes. It's weird. Yeah. I get but, it. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring start. up and we'll <laughs> start digging into the recap of yep. chapter two. Um, Miss Christine, you want to start this one or would you like to me to start or we want to start? Oh, oh wait, was... hold on. I got to hide the comments. I was going to say, I can't see Tara. I can't oh. see Tara. There you go. <laughs> That's all right. It would have blocked my messy kitchen. You your know? kitchen is not messy. Your kitchen is perfect. Just see my kitchen. All right. All right. So gleaning. So chapter two summary. Uh, gleaning hope. Ruth and Boaz's first encounter. So Ruth two paints a beautiful picture of God's guidance, even in our awareness. It's a testament to the rewards of unwavering faithfulness and humility. The generosity shown by Boaz serves as a reminder that acts of kindness can bring profound impact to those in need. Verses 1 through 3, divine providence leads Ruth to Boaz's field. In her pursuit of sustenance, Ruth, unaware of his relationship to Naomi, coincidentally winds up in the field of Boaz to glean grain. Or was it a coincidence? I was going to say, yeah, no. coincidence, I think not. <laughs> Verses four through seven, Boaz learns about Ruth. Boaz arrives in Bethlehem and observing the unfamiliar face of Ruth in his field, inquires about her. His servants inform him, inform him of Ruth's identity and her commitment to to Naomi, which I, I just can't get over that. But verses 8 through 16, Boaz's kindness and generosity. Boaz generously allows Ruth to glean in his fields, providing her protection and allowing her to share his workers' water. He also invites her to eat with his workers, personally giving her roasted grain. Ruth is treated with kindness and respect, uh, despite being a foreigner. 
and not just a foreigner, but a Moabite. Yeah, yeah history. There's history there. Yeah. <laughs> Verses 17 through 23, Ruth's devotion and Naomi's recognition. Ruth works diligently and returns home to share her bounty and recount her day to Naomi. Naomi invites Boaz, identifies Boaz as a close relative, one with the power to redeem them. She advises Ruth to stay with Boaz's female servants and glean from his field till the end of the barley and wheat harvest. Ruth 2 unfolds as the, a key chapter in the Bible, wherein <clears throat> the lives of Ruth, a Moabite widow, and Boaz, a wealthy landowner in Bethlehem, first intertwine. The, chapters, the chapter beautifully portrays them the theme of divine providence, generosity, humility, and faithfulness that un underpin their encounter. Mm. Yeah, okay. that was a cool chapter. It's it such a, this whole book is such a beautiful love story, and it's two different love stories, or three, actually, if you think about it. There's yeah. a love story of God's love for us and through, you know, his son Jesus as the Redeemer. You mm -hmm. see that. And that kinsman redeemer, you see the love between a mother and a daughter, mother-in-law, whatever. Yeah, and then yeah. you see the love that is becoming into this relationship of Boaz and um, Ruth. And it's just, it's all just beautiful and pure. All yeah. pure so pure too. Yes. I, I love it. I just, I, I go back to, and I, I believe it was in the second chapter. It might've been in the first but I think it was the second, just in her sheer devotion to Naomi, Ruth, um, just standing with her, staying with her, uh, treating her as if she, I mean, now I know that we spoke about Naomi treating her like a daughter, but Ruth actually treated Naomi like she was her mother. Like a mother, her, yeah. Her very own mother. And I just think it's, I, that relationship is so sweet to me. I just, I yes. love that. I love okay. that. Okay. So we ready to dig into chapter three? Woohoo. Yes. Let's do this. Yes. Okay. We're going All, right. Right. All right, Miss Tara, take it away. Chapter three, y'all. Can you believe we're already chapter three? Yes. No. Ah, so one day Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, my daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now, Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him know you are there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. Mm. Okay, yes. <laughs> mm. Okay, so she okay. so she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz was finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? He asked. I am your servant, Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of the garment over me since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Mm. You have to come back to that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got some yeah. Got yeah. Some There's a lot of unpacking on that one a lot. <laughs> the Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not you have not run after the younger men which whether rich or poor. And now my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all that all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more close, closely related than I. Stay here for the night and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. 
but if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. I fell in love with Boaz after reading that. Yes. I can't unpack that one. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> now, Tara, did you say you had more slides? Oh, gosh. I got so involved in the story. <laughs> the story. Hold on. Yes. No, 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 I was no, like no, so no. into it. I wasn't doing my job. No, I love it. Just I just like, want to oh. watch more of the movie. Come on. Keep like, going. I'm keep going. going. <laughs> okay. I'm there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I was just into, into it so much that I totally forgot the other slide. Okay. There's coming the fourth slide and then the fifth slide. And then there we go. Okay. Carry on, y'all. Carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. wait. Oh, no, that's that's it. All right. It's perfect. I right. think that's the, I think that's the other one. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. So it okay. that's be... the one I just read. Yep. And then the fourth slide and fifth slide are after that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized. And he said, no one must know that this woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did, he poured into, into it six measures of barley and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. Mm, more questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Each slide we're going to have to unpack like yes. a lot. Okay. Yes, a so lot. when Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty handed. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Hmm. I love that. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, a secret back. Um, I wasn't now, ready for the chapter to be done. I know. I know. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted more juice. And I think, do we have, there's five slides to this chapter, right? Yeah. That's, that's okay. That's all. Okay. No, I just, if we wanted to go back to the, well, I don't think I have the first one. Oh, did I remove it? No, I'm just I, saying if we wanted to go back to that one. Um, I do. I just put it back up. It's the last one. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay. And for All those right. that don't know, we can only have 10 positions open on StreamYard, including us, four. Yes, yes. we so take up four. four. Yes, we take up four. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I wonder how, the, when this starts, okay, riddle me this. It says one day Ruth's mother-in-law. So how long did time pass when people were meandering through town and seeing them and they got back into the groove of moving back home? You know, it it's, you wonder, is it, well, I wonder, I just wonder about weird I don't stuff think like that. It was a, I mean, my brain's telling me it couldn't have been terribly be long. long. Yeah. Because for there for her to be gleaning, which means they yeah. were in the harvest. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and now true. they're threshing. Yeah. So it 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 has to be like from the moment she met Boaz until tonight in this chapter. Um, it can't have been that long. Right. Because that's harvest and threshing. Yeah. yeah, but there yeah. are two harvests. So when they got there at Bethlehem, it was what the beginning of barley season. Barley, and, and then wheat. this is at the end of wheat season. So there's two. But I don't know. Hmm. How, you know, I don't know how many months or whatever there are between those seasons. So right. I get what you're saying. To me, I was thinking it wasn't very long either. But um, when I was reading this morning, I was bringing to the light that it was barley and wheat. And I wasn't picking up on those two different ones. And that's very no. key to know. 
Um, but it may not have been very long either. Cause I don't know you, you, if you plant barley, then you plant wheat right after that. And then, you know, it's just a month or two between the seasons. I don't, I honestly don't know. So that's a good question. Um, yeah. I do know though that they were there long enough that the people there in that town, cause Boaz talks about it, knew her character. You know, mm -hmm. I think they, and I don't know if the words admire, but they did know that she was a woman of character because of her relationship with Ruth. I mean, with Naomi, right? Yeah. Yes. So I thought that was good. So yeah. Henry Oki asks, how much is six measures? And I just looked It's 21 liters, equivalent to 21 liters. Okay. So Dale says it's three to six months apart. Okay. Okay. All right. The what did you say, babe? Oh, sorry. <laughs> All of our men are doing their Googling while we're on. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Do the Google thing. Do the Google thing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm a little crossed because I almost feel like Naomi set her up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Do I still think the meeting was divine? Yes. But would she would she have done it without the prompting? Or I mean, because right. she because truly I okay, I know. Don't don't hate on me here. I'm practicality here. Yeah. So when I y'all know that song from Reba Fancy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this reminded me of that because, mm -hmm. you know, basically the mom, Naomi, she's be, wash yourself up, put on your best dress. You know, she knew that she knew the way to a man. Yeah. And she knew that she couldn't provide for Naomi the way a man could in those days. Yes. Yes. Kind of the same way as. Reba, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Every, yeah. I, I apply everything like that. But, um, <laughs> it helps my brain to understand it. So I'm not. I'm. I was a little bit taken aback here that Naomi would almost play off the weaknesses of a man. Yeah. To play off the weakness yeah. of you know, don yourself up. Wash yourself, yes. wear your perfume, mm -hmm. and then tells him to go lie down, uncover his feet. Uncover his feet. Yes. And lie uh, Is that down. in the next one? Oh, no, that's in this one. Yeah. Then go uncover his yeah. feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. And, and I don't know the context of the day. Like, I don't know. Is is that flirting? Is that yeah. uh, uncover his feet and lie down? I, I guess I could see that as being, yeah. you know, I know that washing of the feet was very honorable and mm -hmm. showed respect and yes this uh, uh, this i'm just not sure but i was a little shocked when you know when i when i saw that yeah yeah i was too so of course me being like you know their intentions you know it's intentions kind of like you know that song you're talking about fancy you know the intentions was not of the best interest right it was survival but it wasn't the best interest yeah. so Thinking back to this, this is how I took it, is that let's say I was a single woman. I don't want to talk to my, and I'm looking for a husband, okay, a redeemer, whatever you want, you know. I'm not going to go ask for advice or from my girlfriends that aren't married, right? Because yeah. they're probably like, go to the club, go to this, you know. Yeah. I'm looking for a pure relationship and marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think Naomi, as like many of us do when we love somebody, you know, is that you're giving guidance, you know? So basically, number one is, girl, you've been working out in the field. You're a hot mess. Yeah. You know, back then, a, mess. Like a, half a year, you know, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So you know, rule 101: get the smell a little bit better. You yeah. Know, <laughs> a little bit more presentable. That's how I took it, you know. Yeah. And, I, and, that, and maybe. I, I see where Tara was going with it too, because that's how I was at first. And I'm like, okay, let me think about this. You know, here's the thing is with with um, Naomi, you know, you go back to chapter one where she's like, you know, girls basically, you know, they're in a contract through that marriage, right? And that doesn't end with death. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. really in I think it's in Deuteron Deuteronomy, it talks about how 
the brothers of the of the widows have a responsibility, especially those that do not have, or the ones that do not have children, which she didn't mm-hmm. have children, right? So mm-hmm. go through those kinsmen or, or the redeemer, the kinsmen redeemers. Yeah. Well, here we are. It's, it's just Ruth and Naomi, right? So Ruth Naomi has a responsibility through that marriage contract, right, mm-hmm. to take care of her, and she's released her, but Ruth wants to stay with her. So as that, she's still going to have that. She's young. She doesn't have children. I want her to find that, you know, marriage and through their historical. And I don't know if this is the way I should say this, not historical, but through, you know, the writings back in Deuteronomy is that that was the 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 kinsman redeemer was supposed to take Mm -hmm. on that responsibility of Miriam. So I think she was just as a Moab, Moab, you know, that wasn't the culture she came from. So I'm wondering if she was guiding her in that, too. To say, yeah. you know, oh, that could have been. That yeah. could have been. I mean, I'm yeah. just thinking that could be. But I, I very, very, me being who I am, and this time where I was going through that, like, wow, you yeah. know, we'll get you a man so can take care of you and kind of fancy thing, you know. And, but I, I think it's almost, it's much more pure than that. And mm-hmm. that's why I really love this about Naomi because. Tara, you know, both of us without mothers, we understand that, you know, that you would love to have that type of relationship where you were guided, you know, by your your mother through those different mm-hmm. times. And um, I think that's where I read into it just for my own personal, like, oh, how sweet, you know, yeah. after I kind of took it back in, like how yeah. sweet was guiding her, which was the most simplest thing of take a bath. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 You have an so care about you, my love. And <laughs> Of it. <laughs> you've been gleaming you've been gleaming <laughs> um so oh yeah so jason just brought me this and creekside maple said the same thing so the threshing floor has spiritual significance um it was she had to be invited to the threshing floor because mm-hmm. it was very much a protected space oh yeah um, for yeah. she was a gentile um ruth comes it yeah, it separates good and evil. So, uh, okay, I mean, that makes that makes sense. Yes, and I'm very- thinking. I was thinking what you were thinking, Tara. And now that I hear Christine's point of view, yeah, I'm kind of like more going towards that. Like Naomi really wanted nothing but the best for her. It's mm-hmm. like, look, I want you to see children. I want you to see a marriage that lasts. I want you to see happiness and, you know, farms and fields and growing. And you're not going to do that if you're stuck under my wing. And so not to push you away, but to so that you'll feel all those joys that that your future holds, you know. And that's why this is such a a great platform (laughs) for myself and for all y'all is because you know until you break it down and you get that you know we're actually getting live feedback yeah at, you know as we're doing this and people are helping and they're conf- you know they're yeah. putting it into context and mm-hmm. you know it, i'm grateful for it so that's why we're digging that's why we're digging well that. you know and honestly if i had read this by myself and we weren't doing that i and i like i said that was my first what you and and gender both that was our first reaction that's the women that as women nowadays, mm-hmm. right, living in the times we are, but we have to think back, like um, Tony said in Creekside Maples, you know, think about the context of what was going on there and stuff. Yeah. Because especially when she lied down, you know, and uncovered her feet, I was kind of like, this is not right. You know, the first to be a pure yeah. relationship. Yeah. This is, no. You know, so it made me dig, honestly, dig a little bit further yes. into those customs. Yeah. The next thing I love about this is that she tells her, besides getting cleaned up and just, you know, smell good, um, you know, make yourself presentable was make sure he's eight. Don't mess with him until he's eaten. He's worked a long, hard day. <laughs> Don't go bug him then. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I was like, amen to that. How true is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't feel like, you know, in some of the stories, you kind of feel like, uh, kind of like in Greek mythology kind of stories, not that I'm comparing the Bible to that, but back in those times, you kind of feel like they waited until the men got well into their cups and then they went in there and laid down with them and, you know, acted like they were somebody else or something else. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very more innocent, pure and heartfelt than that because she laid at his feet 
-hmm. and she uncovered his feet. I don't know the significance of the uncovering the feet. Has anybody dug that up yet? A little. A little. Yeah. So I'm hoping those in the chat will help us with that. What do you so, glean from that, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's see. Are we to that point? Let's see. So wash and put on perfume and get dressed up in your best clothes. Go to the threshing floor. With the threshing floor, one of you brought it up that is a very protective space, right? Mm -hmm. So he's going to take, you know, she says then to watch where he, you know, go undercover, basically. Watch. See where he lies down. And I think that was important, too, because here he is. He ate. You let him eat, you know. Then watch where he sleeps. He slept in on the floor there in the threshing room, probably in a corner. Yeah. I think is what it says, right? Because he's there to protect, you know, that. So he's worked all day. He's eat. So now he's tired. He's going to be sleeping in there. So she has to go in there undercover, right? Mm -hmm. And she lays down at his feet. And at first I couldn't wrap my head around that. Mm -hmm. But what I think is a sign of, of humility and reverence. To the Redeemer. Okay, so I always look back to, you know, Jesus is our kinsman Redeemer, right? So this mm -hmm. is a Redeemer. So she's basically, you know, it would be very hum humiliating for a lot of people to be very humble to that. And basically, she's coming to him saying, I want you to marry me. I mean, I don't know if that's really the word to say, but basically, she's saying, yeah. you know, and she's seen him. He's yeah. seen, and you know, there has to be something yeah. there. Right? You don't just, and you would hope that in your relationship, there is something that you're, you're you know, you, you don't want to just, you're going to spend the rest of your life with somebody, right? There's, there's definitely going to be a physical attraction, but that wasn't what this was about. This was about making it known. Sometimes I think men always, everybody thinks that men are the aggressors. You know, and I'm not saying she's being aggressive, but I think sometimes you have to say, hey, hi, yes, I'm interested, you know, hello, explore it a little bit. <laughs> and then the guys have more of a, oh, okay, she is interested. Because a lot of times maybe men just don't think you're interested. So I wonder if that's what it was about. Well, that's if well, you read in the chat, uh, Tony at Creekside Mo Maples does say that uncovering was the process used to say, excuse me, I'm here. I'm at your mercy. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, it was the nice way of her not being forward. She was being very ladylike yeah. about it. Yeah. She says yeah. it's humbleness and thanksgiving on display. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it is also, though, I mean, that you got to go back to their culture and stuff. And um, so, you know, not knowing their culture, but I always think about, you know, you're talking about earlier, T Tara, about the clothing or not the clothing, the washing of the feet, you know, and you wear sure. sandals and stuff. And I don't know if it was, you know, I know when my feet are uncovered at night. I can't stand it, you know, it's going to get my, it's going to wake me up. So then I was wondering at that part of it, you know, to yeah. wake him up from a long sleep, you know, by uncovering his feet yeah. like, down here. Don't, you know, don't hurt yeah. him. He's startled. Yeah. You know, he's obviously startled. Who are you? You know? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let me go on, make sure I go the right way and I'll go to the next one. There we go. So this is where she does go down mm -hmm. there as her mother-in-law told her to do. Um, uh, let's see when he finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, went over to lie down as far in a while. And so she paid attention to that where he was going. This is the part that kind of got me a little why. Uh, I a little and, something in every slide that I'm like, what? Yeah. 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 So when she says, when it says Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down in the middle of the night, something startled the man. I don't understand the the man instead of saying startled Boaz or startled him. It or, could have yeah, been in the translation. I, I don't know. No, I bet Tony or somebody will help clarify I'm that. Sure that probably, probably is just that. But I mean, okay. So instead of kicking at her or anything like that, he's well, like, "Who are you?" I wonder if it's the man. You know, like our Redeemer, Jesus is our redeemer. This is her redeemer, her, the man, her man, yes. okay. you know, her redeemer, her protector, her, I'm, I'm sorry. No, oh, see, gotta be washed to live with the redeemer. Might drop. Okay. No, oh, I don't think that was on that one. Sorry. But I'm just thinking, you know, um, I don't know that one. I'm not sure about too, but I'm just thinking it, I think it has more to do with well, that's true. The Redeemer. Piggy, said, Piggy says, well, Boaz was, was a man. A man. Was a man. Yeah, I, he was a man. Yes, I understand that. But the wording, the man, just kind of 
caught me. It's very guard. deliberate, you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. Instead of calling him by name or saying like Nana said, saying him. Yeah. Said, oh man, sorry. I'm gonna mute for just a second. You guys go ahead. Yeah, and and Dale said it's the translation, but I'm okay. still gonna have to dig um, a little bit deeper into that because it does I'm, make people go. Take yeah, I mean, as I'm sure, like spread the corner of your garment over me since you are the guardian redeemer of our family. So I'm, I'm assuming that that's partly also maybe in context as a, a marriage proposal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's yeah. offered herself to him as her, his servant. And I'm, I've got to, I've got to think that, you know, spreading the corner of your garment is, is uh, her asking him to cover her with, with grace and, and that's, that's exactly that it. And Redeemer. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's basically, um, put your protection over me be, you know, it's like you're saying a pro marriage proposal yeah. is how I would take that. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to, um, and I can't remember what book of the Bible it is. I want to say Deuteronomy, but it may not be right, but it talked about how Jesus, um, covered Israel, you know, as his chosen people and you put them under his protection um, and I, whenever I think about garments being covered over somebody, I think of that, you know, um, yeah. you're putting them under your protection, your guardianship. And he already wanted to do that. He was already doing that in a very respectful mm -hmm. way. You mm -hmm. know, he had already, he's already showing that besides being that he has a love for her, you know, call it what you want, but no one's just going to say, stay in my field. You yeah. know, Leave I mean, her yeah, he was, her. he was interested. He was like, who is that girl? Who is that woman? I mean, he'd already asked about her from what we've now determined. He had already asked about her weeks ago. Mm -hmm. was yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And he'd been asked, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. I'm going to cover the garment exchange on Sunday. I don't want to. Live. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Crickside Maples, they are doing the book of Ruth too, but you know, um, oh, yeah. Okay. So he's been really diving into, so they just, we just wrapped up chapter two last week and I was like, man, I missed that. You know, we were talking about it, but, uh, chapter three. So, um, that'll be interesting to see, but that's my take on it is that, and I, I wish I could remember those verses. And I know it's maybe in De Deuteronomy, but it talks about how God, um, that was part of that, you know, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The bride, you know, um, Christ bride in Israel and us being under that umbrella and the protection of God. But yeah. I'm probably getting it all wrong. <laughs> I'll clarify that next and go over that next week. Yeah, it's so I'm, I'm going through the comments and I'm, I'm reading the different translations hey, and, and they are so profoundly different it's 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 crazy but yes okay oh, so deuteronomy uh robert young jr hey robert do uh deuteronomy 25 5 10 20, okay and yeah i there's so many beautiful things in deuteronomy uh to go back to the relationship of and um, god with um israel yeah with israel yeah. okay yes Okay, so next time. She's like, marry me. I'm I'm I like you. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. I like this. I like I like, I like directness. <laughs> but she's also doing it in a very modest and humble way because it's still he has to be the one who does that. But this is where I fall in love with him. Yeah. I think his yes. purity to yes. his relationship with her. I, I do do I also do. Wow, I do do. I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even talk talk. <laughs> <laughs> so um I I I love that he is so respectful. You know, you know, there is one more close to you than I. So if he doesn't, I'm gonna snatch you right up, but you know, I have to let him first make his choice, which I I just think that's very um I don't even I don't I don't know how to ball him up in, in one word, but I love that about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This to me, he honored one is their, their, their traditions, their way. Right. And what God has mm -hmm. ordained. But what I also like about this is it tells me that as soon as he met her, he was like trying to figure out where he fell in those ranks. Yeah. Because he knew where he was. He knew there was this other person. There's this other guy. 
But if he's not, you know, if he's not interested, we got to, you know, be respectful and do that. But he's not, you know, yeah. then it's a yeah. clear path for me. So yeah. I like that. And then I like that he too, he, he, he talked about her, um, you know, obviously she must have been quite a bit younger than him. Maybe is how I'm taking this. And he said he didn't go um, after the younger men, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So he was watching her character too. Her her main goal was survival for her and Naomi, right? And, mm -hmm. and what she did in following Naomi's. And, you know, they're watching that. The people are watching it, not just him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah and I think she, like you said, she's, she kind of like what Tara said too. I mean, she's like fancy. She's trying to get up in the, you know, get a better life for her. And she wants Naomi yeah. to come with her. You know, she wants to help provide for Naomi since Naomi has been uh, so good to her. So anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I mean, there's going to be a question I have there, but it encompasses this slide and the next slide. Oh, okay. Well, oh, I've, got, I've got the next one where I can tee it up right on the heels of this one. So, speak it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, okay, so he says, stay here for the night. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, if he wants to do his duties, your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he's not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So then he says, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. So I'm, I'm just a little confused. So if what she, so does he not want, like, what is there to know? What consequences would there be if, if everyone in the community knew that she slept at the feet of Boaz? Well, people are going to talk, you know, you know, people are right. so you have a young lady who stayed yeah. without being somebody there as a, what's not a guardian, but a observer or something, you know? So his thing is he wants to protect what her she, has, what her virtue are, mm -hmm. and also her, you know, in, in the, in the chapter before it talked about how her noble, I forget how it's worded, noble something character. Right, because mm -hmm. the people have watched her and they're talking about her. They like they 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 like Ruth. They they respect her because of what she's yeah. done for Naomi. Yeah. So, so they know that that's if how people knew if people knew that she had slept or that she went through this process of uncovering his feet, sleeping at his feet, and there was this other one who was closer to her as the whether it be an age or family or whatever. Uh, would he not accept her if she laid down at the feet of another man? And that's why he's saying, you know, don't tell anybody you were here. No one must know to give well, her that I, opportunity to, because uh, he said, you know, we'll know in the morning if this other man mm -hmm. wants to be a redeemer instead. Yes. So Dale says she would be known as an adulterer and Debbie or Deborah. She said she would be looked at as a prostitute and his image would be tarnished as well. Yeah. Because there's no one to say that something didn't happen. I mean, yeah. that's how I kind of think of it. Cause you know how people talk, you know, they could say, yeah. no, there's nothing there, but people are like, Oh yeah, you spend a night, you know, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there in yeah. my terms, you know? So yeah. that's what I was wondering. It's like, he knows that people, are human and are going to say things and he knows how yeah. pure it was. So let's just, even though it does look suspicious, he's yeah. trying to, he's trying to make sure that protect her, protect her, I think is part of it. So get up super, super early, which it had to have been, but also he didn't want her to leave that night for her protection too, is how I would take it. Right yeah. Now. Like it's late in the night, you know, there's no telling if she's traveling by herself back to, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And, and he can't walk her back. That's what I'm thinking. I may have it totally wrong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, Joni from Creekside Maple, she said he didn't want anything to jeopardize her redemption. So basically, right. it's kind of like, these are all the bad things. It's kind of like me as risk, you know, it's like, these are all the potential things that could happen. So let's just do this, this, and this. Although that could have a ripple effect too, right? Yes. Yeah. But he was a godly man who followed God's word. He followed the law. And I think that was what he had decided was the best thing, you know, for her, for her protection, whether, you know, um, 
you know, he called her my daughter, you know, and I know that's probably something that, um, that when you're not in that marital, whatever, you know, when she came in, uh, mm -hmm. it just shows his protection over her is how I take it. Yeah. That may be totally wrong, but I, you got to think about, and Dale says it too, you know, you're in that Jewish society in that time frame. There's so many different things happen. You know, I would think too, she could have been stoned, right? Usually it's the women that get stoned when there's some kind of, you know, yes. horrible, you know, kind of thing. Um, but also if, if he had, you know, Boaz, I think would have to, if they had had some type of relationship, which this is totally platonic is mm -hmm. very pure. Um, is how I take it. Um, what yeah. I'm reading, but mm -hmm. I think that he would have had to have married her and therefore if if there was an if it wasn't platonic because even as a redeemer so he wanted to make sure that their that first redeemer by the law was able to make a decision right yes is how I'm taking and I know I'm starting to ramble now but because this no is but I want to I just kind of gleaned something <laughs> oh so Creekside Maples this is interesting so Tony said they weren't there alone there were young men there that that their job was to protect the harvest through the night. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, I think both I've seen comments, you know, with well, from the uh, Mrs. Creekside Maples and prepping for heaven, you know, that, um, you know, trying to understand biblical culture with our modern Western thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's an easy thing to point out that, yeah, that's, you know, uh, and if you've gone through four years of Bible college or six years of Bible college or whatever, then you're looking at it from a different perspective because you have that education. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to bring to the table through this is I'm in the eyes of our Western world. You know, like I am just me. And yeah. if I mm -hmm. have these questions, then surely a lot of other people do too. And I, I, I don't, I don't feel like it's something I'm trying to see through that, but I think a lot of times we're too quick to dismiss and we're just, we just tell them, Oh, this is why. And you're, you know, and, and don't be looking at it through the eyes of the Western eyes or how, you know, in modern day world, because, you know, people are just supposed to accept it and, and, and just take it. Well, that's why me being a part of this was so important because I don't have the mm -hmm. Bible scholastic college education to understand the context. So I think that that's why it's important um, that as we're studying this, uh, I'm asking these questions. And yeah. if I'm asking questions, other people yeah. are going to ask these questions too. And maybe that's why there's such a lack of understanding in the secular world or out there or out here is because we are not getting those explanations or we're not made to feel like it's okay to ask for those explanations because all we have is the insight of what we know in today's world. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, I get that there is context to everything, but if I have these questions, hundreds and thousands of other women sitting behind this screen or watching or typing are going to be having these same questions. Yeah. So, you know, I, I appreciate the patience with it, but also I don't want there to be any kind of um, condemnation for asking the question. Oh, no, um, I hope there's not any that. You know, I think it's, it's, it's super important to me. And, and that's where I feel that me being a part of this is important because um, I want to understand because the yeah. only way to understand and really grasp it around for me to actually process it in my brain. Because somebody is telling me, oh, this, 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 and this, yeah. that, that's not gonna help people to understand. And yeah. so it's just really important to me that I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask these questions and yeah. I'm gonna tell you where I'm seeing it from. Because yeah. if I'm seeing it from this, other people probably are too. And none of us are perfect. And no, and I, that's what I love about this is like, you know, just while I go, I saw it, I saw it like you guys did. And then I did a little bit digging and then I just prayed about it. And then I saw it of a different thing, but then I could also say, well, I'm, am I totally wrong on that? That's how I'm seeing it. Maybe I'm just being kind of silly about, it. I don't know. But that's what I love about that. And, uh, uh, Joni said that iron sharpens iron. And that's what I love about, it. you know, we're learning from each other. And, um, you know, yeah. and I, Dale said it too, is that, 
the Bible. It's the living word. Mm -hmm. So what applied back then applies now is what yeah. God teaches. Mm -hmm. You know, I do want to, to me, to understand the context, though, is that this is the real, because if I read this now and he, she laid it into his feet, you know, I'm like me being the Proverbs 31 woman I want to be, but also that very strong independent woman, because mm -hmm. that's the society I live in. I'm yeah. kind of like. I'm not doing that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I guess that's where that's where my, you know, because when when we were in slide one or two, and you know, trying to figure out what the what it meant to lay at the feet and uncover, yeah. the feet, it was, yeah. you know, it's it's reverence, it's um, you know, showing you humility yeah. for you know for the redeemer. And it's all good things and it's all means something and it's all perfect. But then you get to this slide and then, oh, no, 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 we can't tell anybody. Well, yeah, it's, it's, all, like a secret. it's all honest and it's all, you know, yeah. um, done out of reverence and it's all about the Redeemer. Then who cares who knows? So, I mean, these are, this is the conflict that I had in this, in this particular chapter. Well, it's all yeah. out of reverence. Then what are, oh, go ahead. No, I get what you're saying, because it is, because yeah. we're taught, you know, especially secrets are bad, because usually if you have to keep something a secret, you know, we don't want our children keeping right. secrets from us, right? Because usually somebody has told them something and we know something's bad, right? Right. But then there's also those things of protecting from possibly what could be the opinion of somebody. And I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there, you know. <laughs> so. I get what you're saying, Tara, and I'm I'm calm, I'm I'm comfortable. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but I want to learn yeah. too. But yeah. um, that's uh, I'm sorry, I'm excited about this because <laughs> it's the same things I am conflicted with. Is like to me, secrets are not good. Okay, no, but he's saying, basically, not. let's do this, let's do that. But then Creekside said something to me like, "There's other people in there, and the and." you know, there's men in there and stuff. And that's probably because that's the way they did things back then. I wouldn't know that, you know, I, you know, but I just like, why, why, why is there's that secret, you know? Um, yeah. and, and sometimes I kind of think, well, that's sweet. You know, he's trying to protect her reputation. She's the one that came to him. She's in there, you know, he didn't drag her in there and she let it, you know, but yet why? And that's yeah. some, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. I don't because I see both sides of it. And I wish I knew. Well, let's see. What is Carla Jo? Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to catch up. I, I, oh, I, don't know know what I don't know if you guys saw this or if you noticed it, but it just hit me when Christine said, you know, there could be severe consequences for her if she was found out. Yeah, um, and I don't you know. know. She, was there. she could be stoned. Uh, she could be ostracized, sent away all these other things uh so if you it just all those Naomi is guiding Ruth kind of the way Mordecai guided Esther they both put them in a in a situation oh. where they knew it could possibly be dangerous for them but they were like uh, you know God is with us let's go all yeah. in it's going to work out and so that's, I don't know. I just, well, in, that, in my yeah. head, it's kind of likened to, and I know it's not quite as severe as mm -hmm. Esther's, um, but I mean, she, if she could be stoned for, for lying there with the man at his feet, just like um, Esther could have been uh, killed if he didn't reach his scepter out and accept her, you know, walking into his court they both risked a lot without, I, I mean, in putting all their faith in God and the people who were guiding them. Well, and that could be right there. Okay. So, you know, we're all, we're all sinners, right? We're all flawed. There's nobody perfect. So this may show a flaw. I mean, it could be a flaw of his, I mean, to be, I don't know, not trusting in God. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's a great question and it's thought provoking, you know, I mean, maybe this shows, you know, his decision right or wrong, but that's what he did. Um, yes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to dig in this a little bit more. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to yeah. hit the next two slides. You know, if, if the, We're if the, if the, I know if the consequences, oh, wow. if Oops. the consequences to people oh, find out, 
no, there, there's the words from the sister. If the consequences of people finding out what she had done, then Naomi knew that such consequences could occur at mm-hmm. her prompting of Ruth to do these things. That's so, true. So why would she put her at risk of that? So that's very true. Oh, yeah. That's another um, one. There's a lot to unpack. And here, she loves yeah. it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Okay, so I anyway, might want to we, talk about this some more next week. I really do. Well, we've got the whole rest of the chapter, but um, I do want to bring up the slides from um, oh yes, words from sisters. There we go. Oh, okay. let me take the thing down. No, you're fine, you're fine. No, I want them to be able to see you. So go ahead, Tara, and explain. Yes. So uh, Julia, I love Julie. She sends me the most um, thought-provoking emails. So. Uh, she just said, "Word, uh, this story shows us beyond a shadow of a doubt, those who can, can must share. Those who need must work hard. Uh, there was no such thing as a free handout. Yes, the grain was free, but it had to be gleaned. If those mm-hmm. gleaning did not put in the work, then they could not reap the rewards of God's provisions. Oftentimes, we block our blessings because we hold on tightly to what is ours, and we do not allow for charitable distribution. In our selfish desires of acknowledging something as ours, we thwart the fullness of the blessing. When mm-hmm. we do not share, we miss out on the joy of giving. I love I that last it, line. Yeah, I, like I thought it was a really, really great, um, just a great lesson. And I just, I just thought, y'all, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. I think that's a beautiful email and, huh? and thank her. It thank is. you so much for sending that. Yes. In. Thank but you. he also oh. wants to send anything. Please do. Yes. I, I got to share what Robert Young Jr. He says, I don't have a family, uh, have a church or, or very little family and zero folks to be in the presence of good God loving worshiping folks. So thank you for letting me sit in. I apologize for talking too much. I usually don't. Don't. You're not talking too much. I love this. I love everybody chatting and stuff. You're digging your board with four sisters, but brothers are welcome. Absolutely. (laughs) They're all welcome. Yes. 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 (laughs) Oh that my was goodness. very sweet. That's very heartfelt too. I love that. Yeah, I love Robert. He's such yeah. a good friend. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, thank I love you guys this. for being here. And yes. sorry, I just I get heated over. You know, I am doing this because I want to learn more. And if I've got the questions, I'm sure everyone else does too. Oh, yeah, that's like talking through it. Yeah. But yeah. thank you guys for being here. We appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, chapter four next week. Yes. yes. Very exciting, guys. The Don't. end. The yes. last one. <laughs> I know. I'm so sad. I know. Oh, I'm always sad more. at the end of it. Well, I think almost next week we could send some time on for more questions from Chapter 3. I really do. Wow. I feel yeah. like there's a lot more unpacking there that could be done. So, I mean, you might think about that. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, maybe we'll do that. And, and uh, maybe we, oh, if you guys have something you want us to mm-hmm. dig into, Email us. Hey, something yeah, anymore. email us. Let us know. Yeah, I'm we'll gonna, dig into I'm that particular do area of, of the chapter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to look up some of these things, too, that we talked about tonight and, you know, try to get them onto a slide as well. Oh, that's uh, awesome. And maybe get, I don't know, I, I, I do, I'll go look at some of the other translations and, I don't know, just see where we can all come together on a you know, a resolution. Good understanding of it. And like, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, Ms. Ann from Andel Homestead, she said, you know, you can read it and read it. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just works on you and you see it clear as a bell, you know? Yeah. So that's why it's like, I'm like, I don't want to just leave it like it is. I want us to be able to think about this and dive into it. Like Tara's talking about and pray about it, you know, because yeah. like, it, it does. I mean, I love that you brought that up because there's a lot of thought provoking on, I mean, it's very thought provoking yeah. is what I'm trying to say. And I'd like to know more. Yes. yes, and you know what it feels like that Esther spoke to all of us mm-hmm. a little easier. Ruth mm-hmm. is making us work for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. I want to make the work yes. for these four chapters. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But there's so much well, in there to glean from it. Oh, glean. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, Miss Christine, would you like to pray us out of here this I evening? I would, yeah. Okay. So thank y'all for being here with us. Yes. All right. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this time that we've had to um, share your word and the fellowship we've had and with the chat and um, on on the panel with our sisters. And dear Lord, there are so many things that we want to know. And we just we love that we were able to and allowed to dig into your word and to ask those hard and, and thought provoking questions. And I just pray that you give us um, eyes to hear and ears to see or eyes to see and ears to hear and help us understand that. And so I ask all these things, and there's so many people out there that are in need of healing, dear God, and we know that you are the um, way maker, you are our healer, healer, and I just pray that you touch everyone's lives and pray, pray, place a hedge of protection around everybody as they go through this week. And I look forward to seeing, um, thank you for um, providing us knowledge for next week. And all these things I pray through Christ Jesus' name, amen. 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 That was Thank that you. Was I always get tongue-tied. <laughs> <laughs> Love y'all. <laughs> We love, love you guys. guys. Good night. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>